Uh, welcome back, everybody. All right, I'm uh, down this. You know, I'm, uh, I'm in Victorville again. Uh, I'm getting ready to head over to the drop yard. First, I got to stop in this area, get my trailer washed out, and reefer unit filled up. Uh, of course, my house is a mile from here. The miracle that I just delivered to is right here in front of me. And I'm gonna be going to the drop yard. Drop this trailer, put it out of service for that slack adjuster. Attention, a new important message has arrived. Oh, this is that freight one guy. He's a local driver. I, I, I see him all the time too. Yeah. I'm sent back because I said I, I didn't. Message 24. Yeah. Important received today at 10:43 a.m. on your code. Two, oh. four, eight, five, three, eight, three, zero, two, three, amount 37-0-0. All right, that would be the money code for my washout that I'm going to be doing in Hesperia. Probably figuring out from the, the title of the video what I'm doing. I will be delivering in Richmond, California again. Uh, I assume it'll be Dre Spot, uh, Dre Spot Cold Storage again. Um, I don't know. Uh, the load isn't in the drop yard yet. The other driver uh, had a delivery in Irvine. Uh, this morning and um, my DM said I don't know about an hour or so ago that the driver was 43 miles out from the drop yard the driver just got loaded and is 43 out from the yard uh, yeah hopefully they'll be at the yard by the time I get there that way I don't have no then don't, don't end up wasting time I like to try to get up and out of the area. Uh, I'm thinking about taking the 210 over to the 5, but by the time I get over there, probably start getting into commute hours, and yeah, I don't know about that. I want to get out of the heavier commute area as quickly as I can. So for that reason, I might possibly come back up to the home pass to 138 take 138 across over to 14 and 58 work my I basically zigzag my way up to I fire from there traffic lights okay so for those of you guys who uh, I was talking about Americold in Victorville getting to there this is the other way that it, it's actually more truck friendly uh, the north the southbound on-ramp which I will be using is actually right next to the uh, the southbound off-ramp so you'll get a better if you guys aren't already familiar with uh, my videos, which most of you guys are, but I always end up, uh, you know, you have someone here and there who's never watched my channel and might not be might not be familiar with this area. Yeah, you know, not to mention, uh, I, yeah, you know, I don't. They probably don't know that I live here. Uh, this will be the alternate route, or the other route that I, that you can take to get to Miracle. The, the one that I did not take in my, uh, my delivery to Miracle video. Got a 
have to set my trip meter. I'm guessing it'll be the pretty far end of my shift by the time I get to Richmond. I might even break it up. You know, like maybe uh, get up to like Santanella and then stop for a couple hours. Wait for the traffic in the Richmond area to die, uh, in the Bay area to die down. And then, then work my way over there once uh, traffic gets lighter so I don't have to deal with uh, slower commute traffic. Well, though, I think I'll be up there uh, in the Tracy area after commute hours anyway, or uh, not on the tail end of commute hours anyway. Is there another accident there? There was a fatality accident there about a year ago. Uh, there was one, you know, one shrine there, but now I see, uh, thought I saw a second one there, like there was a uh, Something that more uh, happened more recently there. Prime. Apparently, I have a prime driver who lives here in this apartment complex. be up there in, uh, in Richmond early enough where I could get a 10 hour break knocked out in the conjunction with the delivery and be in a position where I could go pick up another load uh, as soon as I'm as soon as my 10 hour break is done tomorrow morning. You have seven hours and 53 minutes of remaining drive time. Turning on the Mariposa? Yep. Okay. I just got off the southbound off ramp there because he was in the inner inner left lane and I think only people who are familiar with the area know that trucks can actually use the inner left lane here and um, not cause a problem for the traffic in the adjacent lane. slow enough to get into fourth but it wasn't so I had to go back to uh, switch into fifth I was skip shifting from six to four huh? I was trying to skip shift from six to four
Little Sisters truck loss I'll be going to is right by the pilot off 395, but I'm going to use the Main Street exit like I usually do when I'm coming from this direction and going there. I'm going to head over to pilot right after that to fill up the reefer unit, more fuel, and fill myself with some fuel too, um, also known as a drink. We got a little bit of slowing up here. Come on, car. Pick up the pace. Come on. Because I'm not going to slow down for your ass if you can't bother to speed up. Come on. I know you can speed up faster than that. I know you're going to do like 75, 80 anyway. trapped over here. Uh, maybe yeah, yeah, after this car gets by I should be able to get over. Uncle transportation. this season but um, American Idol I'm going to have to say uh, congratulations to a uh, local area guy uh, Chase Beckham for winning it that should, have, that should have warned you a spoiler right there first but oh well most of you guys uh, are on Facebook anyway and have probably gotten spoiled by uh, yeah, that already had someone spoil it on uh, Facebook anyway. fleet driver there. I'm waiting for a day I run into Jonathan Calhoun on that route sometime. He's a, well, he's a Walmart private fleet driver. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Uh, well, I've, I know him from online and uh, I, uh, I think he used to drive for Sea or England. I think that's how I know him originally. And then then he, all, he watches my channel a lot too. Okay, red circle versus red arrow. Which one applies? Because there we go. It's, that'll work too. Because they mean two different things. A red circle means I can uh, turn on red. Yeah, after I stop. A red arrow means you can't. Yeah, you can't turn at all until the light turns green. 
Uh, we're gonna be coming down, uh, coming westbound on Main Street until we get to La Mesa Road, which is where the tractor supply uh, company store uh, up ahead on the left is. And it'll be a left turn from there. And 14 minutes to get over here. It's kind of beats up clock. I, Usually do uh, personal convey from here down with the yard, but because I delivered to Americold um, and technically I'm getting paid the deadhead miles from Victorville to San Bernardino. Um, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and on duty drive it since I'm getting paid the miles anyway. Uh, just don't know how many miles I gotta cover total. Uh, don't wanna spend too much time driving at slower speeds in California because you, uh, you run the risk of, like, if I run like 550 miles shift, uh, too much uh, data, uh, too much slow traffic speeds like what I'm doing right now can actually uh, affect my ability to cover that 550 miles in a shift uh, just because I'm in California 550 is easy as shit when I'm in uh, when I'm outside California where I can do 70 miles an hour I can do that with uh, I can do almost 550 before I even have to take my 30 minute break but California forget it it's uh, yeah man. and I still have I uh, have city driving to do in uh, uh, in San Bernardino to get to the yard more city driving to get back to the interstate. Then I gotta evaluate how many miles it's going to be from the yard up to Richmond. And you know, on, on both on whichever route I you know, put you know, more than just one route option. Figure that all out. See how easy a time I might I'm actually gonna have getting up there. Daily, I think I want to get up to uh, maybe Santanella. Maybe do my 30 minute break there and uh, eat me some In and Out Burger, which I've not had in a bit. I know some of you guys are not huge fans of In and Out, but it's a very well liked restaurant here in, uh, in, in California. Oh, got another truck behind me. Don't really see too much truck activity here, so oh, that's a night. Night truck. If he's coming this direction, I have to think he's probably a local driver as well. I don't really, really don't see drivers from out of the area using this street. Giving me this load though, because I was hoping for something that would go up in that direction, and then uh, maybe something that'll that I can pick up tomorrow and bring back to the drop yard. That should put another about thousand miles or so on my on my week, which can make a big difference on my paycheck. Uh, this load, I, this Americold load that I just delivered early this morning was, it's the first first trip of the settlement period that I'm getting paid for, so, and that's only like, a, uh, that's not even that many miles. I don't even think it was a thousand or, uh, or no. Maybe I have two, no, I have two trips. The load I swapped out with uh, William, and then the, the one that William gave me, now that's probably, uh, I don't know, somewhere around 2,000 miles ran this week. Somewhere in that neighborhood. And this will, uh, you know, between this load and the, whatever I do next, that'll get me, uh, should get me into the 3,000 range for the week. Which I like to do at least, uh, you know, as a minimum, it's about 3,000. 
that he's got truck payments to make and I want to get it paid off the quicker the better and the more miles also means uh, better take home pay as well Is this in the road? Under someone's shirt or something, I don't know. Now on every I usually come here and never have traffic either over there at that turn or here to worry about. <laughs> it's, and uh, yield to other traffic in both cases. Ten roads, so I see them around. I see them every so often on I-40. All right, little sisters, where we're at. We here on the left side will be the washout lane. There is a uh, dump trailer. Uh, look like a belly dump in the lane already. EFS check ready to go so I can pay for my washout without having to pay out of pocket. Well, I kind of do pay out of pocket, but I get but I get reimbursed the same time this does. No, this. Why aren't you going the wrong way? Interesting. Thought they were supposed to go on the other side or come in this way. All right. All right, guys, time to go into the bay, finally. We're a little bit outside the bay with the tractor by the time. <laughs> Guys, closing the doors now. As soon as he's done hosing down the the, the outside of the doors, uh, we'll be out of here. My DM informed me a you few minutes ago that, minutes that the other driver is at the yard now. Uh, I don't have the load assignment on my Qualcomm yet, so they might not have actually uh, sent their Macro 13 yet to drop the trailer, but um, at least they're there, so I know I won't have to shouldn't have to wait for the um, we shouldn't have uh, shouldn't have to wait for them to show up now uh, before I can I get the radio check radio check I'm clear check sure. uh Jim Portman appreciate the radio check alright Brian it's JFD alright what are you doing out there Willie? chill my brother oh Smoke in and out, smoke in and out. Smoke in the green. The cloud is green. Alright, so far. Alright, I appreciate it, thank you. 
Which is what you're not radio checks for pretty how does this one sound? Well, it's good, I'll it. very helpful for me knowing what he was up to. He wouldn't have his four ways on if he was trying to come out. And no, this guy looks like he wants to park over here too. Look, I've got Delta 4290 here. Where's this guy going? Oh, shit. All right, let me get out of your way there, quick bullet. Let's go for that spot over there. Okay, we're going to have to wait for Prime to leave first. Because I can't get to my reefer unit. I'm on uh, my reefer tank. Oh, he's getting ready to leave. myself lined up with my tank. Should be good. I don't think whoever loaded this uh, flatbed in the next lane over did a very good job wrapping because uh, that cellophane hanging all over the side of the trailer in between the the that uh, the axles. Alright, yeah, I take my time here because uh, Western Express trying to leave at the same time. Let him go first and then I'll go. to be different. XX5 Transport Incorporated. is 
number again, I can't remember. It's a KW. Uh, Let's see. coming and deciding to go extremely slow. Fucking asshole! You're gonna change your fucking turn signal from left to right, you fucking piece of shit. Yeah, why would I think that a fucking four-wheeler be coming into that parking lot? Especially when he's, uh, he's still signaling left. And he's uh, that uh, swinging that wide. Not even in a damn truck, and he's uh, acting like he's in a truck with a hundred foot trailer. Jackass. Get over it. I don't got time for stupidity like that. You stay green for me, or are you gonna turn red for that red for that pickup? No, you gotta stay green. Yay! Yay! There was a pretty bad accident right over here, uh, not long ago. Someone was coming southbound like this, and someone ran a red light, uh, coming over, uh, coming across Joshua Street, and. The truck that was coming southbound ended up barreling into the parking ride lot. Damaged some of the cars that were there. Just got underneath the 210 freeway right now on 215 southbound. And I'll be getting off at the 5th Street exit here in San Bernardino. It's a couple of more exits up. We're going to have Baseline Avenue first and then we'll have 5th Street after that. Better hurry up. Yeah, I don't see too many of those around anymore. Actually, I hardly ever see those around. Even when, uh, even when they were being produced, I don't think I really saw those much. Need all the way to the right. I 
don't want this traffic coming off of the 210 to cause a problem for me. me speed up because this guy. Yeah, otherwise, this idiot will try to pass me on the right first and then cut in front of me and not let me over when I need over. Because they can't be bothered to slow down. track maintenance there it looks like on the middle track whatever it is going on all right niece if you moved uh, Cali uh, our intermodal yard here in San Bernardino is right here on my right straight uh, on the other side of the freeway and on the right side you know what a fucking stop sign is Fucking dipshit. Fucking idiot. This guy's just wait accident uh, an accident waiting to happen. Well, he wasn't even gonna stop and I was uh look, he's going right through all these red lights. Bicycle rider here on uh, Fifth Street, heading eastbound from Avenue uh, from East Street. Bicycle, and a freaking freaking idiot just now almost got hit again. Um, okay, I was getting off southbound 215. Yeah, all right, it looks like he's stopping at Jack in the Box at the uh, corner of uh, where is it? Yeah, fifth and deep. Uh, okay, I was gonna, I was exiting two, southbound 215. I had a green light, and this freaking idiot was riding on the sidewalk eastbound on the lane right next to my corner, and almost got hit by me. And then he goes, uh, follows me around the other side, and then he goes blowing right through all the red lights right there on the other side of the interstate. And I just watched him almost get hit a minute ago by a car trying to make a right turn on the heat from. Uh, 
I think it was like a balloon monster or something. Yeah, it looked like he just stopped at the jack because I just passed right by him when he was looked like he was going in the jack of the bottom line. moron. That guy is just asking to get hit and it's going to be his fault. Going right through red lights. I mean, well, the All right, Avenue E, though, you know, he's a vehicle technically, so if he had a green light, then technically it would have been the, the Mazda's fault, but then again, the Mazda was ahead of him, and he should have had to, he uh, should have been smart enough to know to stay uh, behind the Mazda, but this guy's just, ah, just, you're just asking to get killed. legal just uh, by the way passing on the right if it's okay to do that as long as the car that you're doing that with is uh, signaling a left turn and they're waiting to make a left I've read it in the vehicle code myself so I know that's I know it's legal lights again it looks like all right now uh, yeah now del rosa will be coming up next and that'll be the street i'll be turning right on man i'm gonna have to double check my 11 hour clock and how many miles i gotta cover to be absolutely sure i can get up there Should be able to, but you never know. But the problem is with all this slower speed driving through both Victorville and Esperia area and here in San Bernardino, it's, uh, it's gonna get, it's, I'm gonna be concerned about how how much of my clocks are gonna get eaten up by this. I go on the yard move status when I get to the yard. Alright, it's Del Rosa Drive right here. I'll be turning right right here. Can't see very well, but they're getting a, they got a yellow light now, and yeah, I can see enough to know that nobody's gonna come. All 
right, minor reminder for you rookies. Use this interior mirror view. Look how much I was actually staring at, actually over at the right mirrors and not at where my tractor was going. I let my peripheral vision worry about where the tractor's going and then uh, focus specifically on the tandems most of the time. Very common mistake with uh, new drivers, uh, new truck drivers, is they'll, uh, they'll, they'll get fixated on what the tractor's doing and uh, they'll look at the tandems one time and that's it. And then uh, they'll think that that's enough and next thing you know they're having an accident because they made a stupid assumption that they were clear when they weren't. Don't make assumptions. I don't care how much experience you have. You get you, you look your fucking ass at that mirror. Yeah, even if you know you're clear, it, it still helps to look over there just to, to perfect your turns. Hey, how well, uh, how close or far from the curb did my tandem's track? I want them to track just perfectly around and. If there's, a, if there's any little mistake in there that I can maybe pick up on a little bit of clue with to, to do the turn better next time, then that's what's going to make me better. Alright, uh, I think it's one of the local guys here. 795, yeah, he's, he's one of the locals, I believe. He's a, He has a paid off truck. It's like 829, that's... I don't I know him? It's not, no, it's not, no, I know Jason Bray's truck is, uh, different. Yeah, I think it's silver. Oh, it's up, Octavio. Okay. I knew I knew him. Yep. Ah, thanks. I got my load assignment in, so I don't know what trailer I'm going to be picking up, but I can at least drop the empty and ask, hey, where's my load assignment? If you said the other the other driver's already showing up here, then why isn't it, why isn't the load on my truck yet? Or uh, why haven't I seen it on my Qualcomm yet? Oh, looks like they filled in some of the potholes. Thirty-six, seventy-six Alpha over there. I've seen him as well. up with the back. Hopefully that pickup back there is not going to be on the way. I can't see him and I don't know where he's at. guys parked where I can't see them so I have no idea where they're at
Uh, as soon as I line up with this trailer next to me, uh, we'll just stop. That nice, should good. slightly away from the trailer then I'll report it, uh, report it for maintenance uh, slack adjuster missing the uh, clevis and then that landing gear is the one spot where it's really really difficult to rotate okay tag it now we'll go a little bit more detail on this one uh, difficult to operate the landing gear in one area not far above the current position so that way they know it's uh, they don't have to go very far it's only one little area of it Tim or you know one of the one of the trailer repair guys here. I saw the the, the reefer guy, the carrier guy here, but I'm thinking I gotta talk to the other one. No idea what trailer I need to grab, so I'm gonna have to wait. So, yeah, so that's some uh, for you guys to think about. Now, uh, with what happened here is that that pickup, I knew he was following me, and I was pretty sure he was gonna go that way, but I could not see him. I was off off track to the left. I look over there, all I see is my trailer, and uh, nothing, not really much anything else. Over there, I don't, I never saw him go by, so I knew he was over here somewhere. And until I knew for sure where exactly he was at, I wasn't going to move my truck. So that's why I ended up going to double check where he was at. And then when he finally realized that I was going because I couldn't see him, it was all when I was walking back to my truck, then he decided uh, to go around me. Okay, something came in, but I think it was just a message. Oh, no, it's there. All right. Um, looks like 7126 is my trailer. Should be over here in this row somewhere. As long as it's not next to this guy, I'm good. <laughs> Which it's not. But I probably will ask him if he does trailers also or just the reefers. There it is right there. Oh, that's going to be fun trying to crank that landing gear.
Yeah, not a lot of room between my trailer and the one next to it. The other option I would have would be to hook up temporarily to the trailer to my left. Let me drop my airbags. I think my I think this trailer is sitting low enough where the the back of the fifth roll about banged up on the front of the trailer, which you gotta watch out for. Now I can lift it up. First, I'm intentionally over here a little bit to the right side of the trailer. That way, when it goes through the little funnel part, uh, when it goes through the funnel part, it'll push, it'll push the trailer in uh, to the left, and it'll give me more room to work with. Expired registration, but also the DOT on this trailer is overdue. A new important message has arrived. Let me call breakdown, double check what information they have, but uh, looks like the DOT inspection on this one expired at the end of March. Hey Jessica, how you doing? This is Scott Zane on L3365. I'm trying to pick up a trailer at the San Bernardino yard and it looks like it has expired DOT inspection on it. I just want to double check if that's what you guys also have. 7126. Okay, so it is expired on your side also? I see a carrier technician right over like about six or so trailers over to my left. Uh, yeah, I don't see them here, but I know the carrier guys here. I see the Thermal King truck, but or pickup, but okay, okay. All right, I'll talk to them. Uh, that's what I thought. All right, I'll see if I can find them over there. I don't know if they're in that shack over there, if they're some doing something else. Okay, appreciate it. All right, thanks. Bye. So I'm getting a lot of education here when you're picking up trailers. As a reminder, check the registration box. Uh, this one has re expired registration and expired DOT inspection. I had to go uh, track down the TK guy and ask him if he'd come over here and inspect it. Here we got here. Oh, it's Jaime. Yeah, he's one of the local drivers here. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, now I gotta sit here and wait for him to do the DOT on it before I can leave. Because if I if I put it anywhere else, then I mean, if I take it with me, there's a chance that I could uh, 
get inspected and uh, flagged for a violation there. Now, maybe even, uh, I don't know if, out of, if uh, expired DOT is an out of service condition or not. I have to double check the CVSA criteria, but I mean, I, at the very least, I'll probably get a, uh, a violation for operating the trailer with, a, a, with an overdue inspection. And then also, if you do a, a multi stop tie, uh, uh, Tyson load, just an FYI, because a lot of people don't know this. A lot of times Tyson or even sometimes JBS too will uh, will put the uh, the secondary and trinary stops or whatever uh, their seals in um, inside the back of the trailer. Usually either inside the on the inside of the right door or on the wall uh, real close to the door. In this case, the the driver who dropped us put a JCT seal on it and. Uh, I was able to peek in through the inspection door, and I could see that the the packing envelope with the, the seal that's supposed to be on there was uh, was stuck to the side of the wall, and actually within reach where I could reach my arm into the inspection door and grab it off the wall. Uh, well placed. So uh, there I've been in. I also didn't have load locks in, but when I opened the the trailer up to take a better look, uh, the the back uh, the last pallet is only uh, maybe a couple of feet off the ground anyway. So. That's not one that I would even be worried about putting a load lock on. But just, uh, just good information for some of you guys who uh, either are new to a reefer or uh, new to JCT, whatever. Uh, maybe you're, especially, uh, or maybe if you're not new to JCT, maybe you're just new to doing multi stop Tyson loads. Uh, we do a lot of Tyson loads here, and uh, that's something to watch for, okay? So I yeah, ended up pulling, pulled the other, the other driver's seal off. And I put the seal on that's supposed to be on there. Yeah, and here's the packing envelope that the seal was in. Was the trash. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this one. I'll do a, a separate video for going from here to Richmond. Uh, I'll probably talk more about the you know, how the inspection of the DOT went once the guy's able to do it. Because I'm just I'm gonna have to sit here and wait. I can't really afford to. Uh, I mean, well, the, the load can sit and wait. I don't care. Um, I have time to work with. It's not a. It's not that big a deal for me to to wait for him to do the inspection on it. So we'll just sit and wait. All right. Well, that's all on this one. Uh, thanks for watching. And again, I'll have uh, you know, hopefully a bit shorter footage here than a shorter footage uh, when it's time to go deliver in Richmond. So we'll see you guys then. Thanks.